For most people, investing means give your money to Wall Street and leave it there for 40 years. That way, when you retire, you hopefully will have a lot of money. The problem with this type of investing is you're taking on all the risk while somebody else is getting paid. Like what happens if you're getting close to your retirement age and then a recession hits? Then what? We saw this happen before the 2008 crash. We saw this again in the 2020 crash where the market crashed and people were selling out of their retirement accounts at huge losses. But what if you could get paid while you wait for your investments to grow in value? That's exactly what you get when you invest your money into cash flow producing assets. I like cash flow because when you have cash flow coming in from your assets, now you're getting paid without you having to go to work. And if you have enough income from your assets, from your investments to cover your expenses, now you're financially free. Your investments will pay you even when you're not going to work, so now you can live your life without having to worry about money because your assets are paying you with cash flow. Now this is going to require you to change your investment strategy a little bit to start generating this cash flow, but it changes the way you think because now you're working to stack your cash flow instead of just working to stack assets that will hopefully be worth a whole lot more money at some time in the future. There are three general ways that you can invest your money for cash flow. Number one is through stocks and paper assets. Number two is through real estate. And number three is through a business. Now, each one of these have their own subcategories as well. Like in the stock market, you can get cash flow from dividend paying stocks or dividend paying ETFs or REIT stocks or REIT ETFs or international dividend paying stocks. In real estate, it's the same thing. You can own and operate your own real estate. You can invest in real estate funds. Both of those will pay you with cash flow. And even in business, you can own a business that pays you profits. You can get royalties. So we're going to be going deep into all of these different types of cash flow in this video, which is why you definitely want to watch this video until the end. The nice thing about investing for cash flow in the stock market is for one, you don't need a lot of money to start. You can start doing this with as little as $100, even less than $100. And second, you can create automatic investments where now anytime you get paid, you can have some of the money automatically invested into your portfolio of cash flow producing investments in the stock market. And third, now when you start generating this cash flow from the stock market, you can choose if you want to automatically reinvest it to buy you more cash flow or if you want to start using that money to start living your life. So you have a lot of flexibility with the stock market. So let me start by talking about the difference between dividend stocks and dividend ETFs and let me go over some examples before we go even deeper. All the examples that I'm about to go over are just examples. I'm not telling you what to invest in and investing has risks. You're never guaranteed to make money when you invest. You might even lose money, which is why you need to always do your own due diligence and never blindly trust a random guy on YouTube. When you invest in a dividend paying stock, this means you are investing in an individual company. You're investing in a business. Now this has its pros and cons because if you invest in a good business that then takes over the world, well now not only will you see the stock price go up, meaning your investment value rise, but you will probably also see your dividends rise as well because when the company makes more profits and the stock prices go up, they want to keep compensating their investors, their shareholders, people like you, with bigger dividend checks. So you get bigger dividend checks just for holding a good company that is now growing. But you also take on the risk. Because now if this company goes down and they go bankrupt because the CEO ran the company into the ground, well now not only are you going to see your dividends go down to zero, but the company investment value also goes down to zero. So you're taking on the highest risk, but you also have the highest potential reward. So a few examples of dividend paying stocks that people like to look at are AT&T, JP Morgan, and Pfizer. These are three different ticker symbols. If you invested into the AT&T stock at the time we recorded in this video, they are paying a 5.4% dividend yield. That means if you were to invest $100 into this company in one year, they would pay you $5.40 over the course of the year in cash flow. Now that might not sound like a lot of money, but you have to remember a couple things. Number one, this is cash that you're earning without having to sell the stock, without having to do anything. Maybe the stock price will rise as well. So now you have the appreciation in the stock price and the cash flow in your hand. And second, the way that cash flow investing works is you take the cash that you have right now that's not doing anything and you put it into this cash flow investment that then starts generating you a return. The more cash you have to invest, the more cash flow you will get. So the way you generate cash flow is by having more money to invest. We're not talking about how to get more money in this video. We're talking about how to take the money that you have and turn this cash that's not doing anything into to a cash flow producing asset. The more stocks you buy, the more cash flow producing assets you buy, the more cash flow you will get in return. If your goal was to start generating $30,000 a year of cash flow, that means that you would have to invest $550,000 into this stock today at a 5.4% yield to get $30,000 for the cash flow. And you'd have to invest just over a million dollars into the JP Morgan stock at this 2.8% yield to generate $30,000 worth of cash flow today. 
Now you might hear that and say, wait, that is an impossible task. Where am I going to get all this money to start investing for cash flow? But this is where you have to also understand the goal. When you invest traditionally for retirement, you are investing for 40 years. You're putting some money aside every time you get paid. And for 40 years, you're going to put money aside. That way you can hopefully have this big retirement nest. But this is kind of the same, but now instead of just working for a big retirement nest, what you're working to do is to also build cash flow as well. So this is something that you don't want to do just once. You want to keep investing your money every time you get paid, every week, every two weeks, every month. Keep putting some money aside. And if you keep doing this, yeah, maybe you start with $5 of cash flow right now, but you keep working to grow that year after year after year. And after a decade, you'll surprise yourself. After two decades, you'll be even more surprised. And then you'll start to see how you can start building even more cash flow to start living your life. Now, a big reason why this strategy doesn't work for so many people is because what company do you invest in? How do you know what's a good company? How do you analyze the company? How do you know if you're overpaying for a company? And this is a type of analysis that a lot of people don't want to do or aren't interested in doing. So if you're not interested in keeping up with a company, listening to its earnings calls, studying the financials, doing the valuations of a company, then maybe you shouldn't be investing in individual stocks, but you can consider investing in ETFs. An ETF is a group of stocks. It stands for Exchange Traded Fund. And now instead of investing in just the AT&T company or JP Morgan or Pfizer company, Company, you can invest in all three of these companies and in 50 other high dividend paying stocks because now you're investing into a fund that gives you exposure to dozens or hundreds, maybe even thousands of companies that are giving you a specific goal. Now, for the purposes of this video, we're talking about high dividend paying ETFs. So ETFs, funds that give you exposure to a group of high dividend paying companies with the goal of giving you a dividend. That way now, instead of you having to find the best dividend company to invest in, you can just invest in this fund. The advantage of this now is if you invest your money here into this AT&T company and then they go bankrupt, well now you lose everything. But if you invest your money into a fund that gives you exposure to the AT&T company and a hundred other stocks, well now if AT&T went bankrupt, you have 99 other companies to balance this one out and then the fund will automatically kick AT&T out and put another company in. So your risk is much lower, but your returns are also lower because now you're going to be balanced up by some of the losers. So you'll typically see a little bit lower yields here on the dividend ETFs, but your risk is significantly lower and your time investment is also a lot lower. A few examples of these types of dividend ETFs are SCHD, VYM, and SDY. When you invest in any one of these ETFs, you're getting exposure to a number of different high dividend paying companies. And as a disclaimer, I personally own SCHD and VYM. Now, how do you make a decision on what you want to invest in? For one, you want to make sure that the investment institution that's creating this fund is a reputable one. For example, Vanguard is the company that pioneered index funds. So they're very well known in this industry of funds. Second, you want to take a look at what are the actual assets within the fund. Like if we take a look at what stocks are in VYM, you can see this invest in companies like Johnson & Johnson, Exxon Mobil, JP Morgan, Procter & Gamble, and hundreds of other companies because you have 440 pages of companies. So when you're looking for a high dividend ETF, you're investing in these without investing in individual companies, you're investing in groups of dividend paying stocks. Then we can move on to REIT stocks and REIT ETFs. A REIT is a real estate investment trust and it's a way for you to get exposed exposure to the real estate market. Now, personally, I prefer owning physical real estate as opposed to a REIT or a REIT ETF, just because I am a real estate investor and I like the idea of owning my own real estate. But when you invest in a REIT, now what you're doing is you're investing in a company that invests in real estate. And by law, these real estate companies are required to pay out 90% of the profits in the form of dividends, which is why many times you will see higher dividends on REIT stocks and REIT ETFs. Let's start by going over a couple examples of REIT stocks. Now, if you want some additional resources on how to actually start investing your money with a step-by-step -step guide, we have a free ebook in my Market Insiders company that my team put together, which breaks on how do you start investing your money for cash flow and passive income. If you want to read this guide, it's completely free. And I'll put the link to hike and download this guide on how to start investing your money down in the description below. But a couple examples of REIT stocks are O, which is Realty Income Corporation, and then SPG, which is Simon Property Group. These are two different different real estate investment companies. This Realty Income Corporation, this is a company that invests in real estate across the country, even some international real estate now. And the Simon Property Group is one of the largest and most premier shopping mall owners in America. So now when you invest in these companies, again, you're getting exposure to the company. And then both of these companies pay out dividends 
O pays out 4.41% at the time of recording. Simon Property Group is paying out 5.5% at the time of recording. Now, of course, there's risk when you invest in either one of these because now you're investing in the individual company. And of course, this is more reliant now on what's going on in the real estate market. If you really want to get exposure to REITs and you want to limit some of your risk, you can also look at investing in some REIT ETFs, something like VNQ or USRT. These are two different REIT ETFs that give you exposure to a basket of different REIT companies. That way you can lower some of your risk. And VNQ at the time of recording is paying 3.9%. USRT is paying around 3.4%. And then on top of that, you have your international funds. And we'll just focus on international ETFs, something like IDV or VYMI. As a disclaimer, I own both of these. Now, what these do is now you can get exposure to companies overseas and around the world that are not necessarily reliant on the United States dollar or the United States government. Now, what does this mean? You're diversifying your way outside of the United States economy, outside of the United States dollar, into sometimes less stable countries, so higher risk, which is why you're looking for higher potential reward. That's why you'll see sometimes higher dividends on these, like IDV at the time of recording has just over a 7% yield, VYMI just under a 5% yield. So now it's a way for you to get exposure and diversification while still generating cash flow. Now, I'm gonna shift gears now and talk about real estate investing, but before I do, I wanna go over just very briefly on how I actually implement this because there's a couple different ways that you can actually invest your money. You can take your money and go out and actively find an investment that you like and put your money in whenever you have enough money to invest. Or the second option is you can create a passive investment system. Like for me, with my ETFs, I have a passive investing system where every Wednesday, I don't have a secret science as to why I pick Wednesday, but for me, it's just Wednesdays. I have money that's automatically pulled out of my checkings account and is invested into my portfolio of different ETFs. Now, again, most of my ETFs are paying me with cash flow. Not all of them do, but most of them do. Now what happens is every Wednesday, money is automatically gonna be invested into this portfolio of ETFs that's now working to grow. Grow in value, but also grow in cash flow. And then when I get this cash flow, this cash flow is automatically reinvested to buy me more cash flow. I use a platform called M1 Finance. They've been a sponsor of me in the past. They are also an affiliate of Minority Mindset, meaning if you use my affiliate link, we will get compensated. I like M1 Finance just because of how simple it is and they have this passive investing system built in and it's free to use if you want to use their investing features. So if you want to learn more about M1 Finance, I also have their link for you down in the description below. The second way that you can invest your money for cash flow is by investing your money into real estate. And generally, when I talk about investing money into real estate, Estate. I'm talking about actually buying a property, whether it's a single family home, an apartment complex, an office building, something else, a mixed use building. You're buying something that way you can own it and then rent it out to somebody else. Somebody will use it or live there and then they will pay you rent every single month. Now there is an alternative, a passive type of investing into real estate where you invest your cash into a real estate fund and somebody else is going to operate and manage the real estate so now you're a silent partner, you just give them your money. But generally speaking, if you wanna invest in real estate, it's going to require more cash and more time upfront. And it's also gonna require a bigger team because now you actually have to operate the investment. When you go out and invest your money into a company, well now the CEO and all the workers in the company are working to grow the value of the company. You just give them your money because now you wanna see some of the profits because you wanna see your stock price go up or you want to get your dividends. Well, when you invest in real estate, now you have to own and operate the property. Now I don't recommend you manage the units yourself. I would say go out and get a property manager that would now you have somebody who's making it passive for you. That way you don't have to be the one that gets the call that the toilet is clogged. Have a property manager that will deal with all the day-to-day -day issues, but you still have to find the property manager and manage the property manager to make sure that your deal is working and producing a profit for you. When I invest my money, I'm looking for a 7% cash on cash return on my money. That means for every dollar that I invest into real estate, I want to see seven cents of cash flow from the property. So if I invest $100,000, I want $7,000 of profit hitting my bank account every single year. Now again, this doesn't accrue depreciation, but when I invest in real estate, I'm not investing betting that the property value is gonna go up. I'm investing knowing how much cash flow that I can generate. Because for me, that bet on where home prices and real estate prices are gonna go is speculation. It's gambling. I don't know what's gonna happen with home prices in six months, 12 months, 18 months, five years, 10 years. So I don't like to bet on that. Instead, I wanna look at this, this cash flow because this is something that I can predict with much more accuracy. And if I can buy a property in a good area with growing demand where rent prices are strong, well now if home prices go up, that's just icing on the cake. If home prices go down, well at least I know that I'm still getting my cash flow. 
That's why for me, I am a cash flow investor, especially when it comes to real estate investing. Now, of course, real estate has some other benefits as well. You also get tax breaks. You also own a hard asset because now you own the bricks, you own the land, you own the windows versus when you invest in the stock, it's just a paper asset. So there's a lot of advantages to investing in real estate, but again, it takes more time and more effort on your end. Now, there are ways for you to passively invest in real estate. Many times these are called syndicate deals, where now you are going to find a developer, you're going to find an operator, you're going to find an investor who wants to go out and buy a property or build a property or do some real estate deal, but they just need money. And there's always people who need money. There's always investors that are looking for money. The easiest way to find these people is just to go to a real estate investor conference in your area. There are always people that are looking for money that are trying to put together deals. Now, what you can do is you can give them some of your money, and then when you give them your money, they will give you a piece of ownership in the property, and then you will get your share of the profits until they either sell or refinance, and they give you your money back, plus hopefully some gains. Now, of course, this has its own risks, because now, well, there could be a crash in the housing market. Renters might not pay. Renters might damage a property. So you have risks associated with investing your money in real estate, but this is another way for you to generate cash flow. And in addition to now the syndicate deals that I was just talking about, you also have some platforms on the internet like Fundrise, which are also making it easier for people to invest their money into these types of real estate deals, because now with Fundrise, you can invest your money through the platform and get exposure to real estate. I have invested some of my own money with Fundrise, and as a disclaimer, they have also sponsored me in the past. They're also an affiliate from Minority Mindset. So if you wanna learn more about them, I got their link down in the description, but of course, do your own research, find the platform that's right for you. My goal isn't to push you and tell you what to do. I just want to give you resources so you know where to start. And the third way to generate cash flow is through business. Now, there's a couple ways that you can go by doing this. You can go out and buy a business, and sometimes this is going to require you to work there. But the profits that you get, not the salary you get from working there, not your hourly wage, but the profits that's left over in the bank account after you pay for all the expenses and your wage, that's the cash flow you get for owning a business. And second, it's by creating your own business or having something that can pay you with royalties or fees after you create something. Now, I've never gone out and bought a business that pays me with cash flow. I invest in startups, but these are not cash flow producing investments. These are investments that I'm investing in that I hope will get bought out or go public or get acquired, something like that but I've never bought a franchise or one of those other businesses, so I can't really talk about that. However, I have created my own cash flow producing businesses. Now, there's a couple ways that you can go about doing this. Again, the first way is to create a business where then you can plug yourself out of, and then now you can have somebody there that will be working there, and you can get your share of the profits. For example, I own a company called Briefs Media. I talked about Market Insiders. I own Market Insiders and Briefs Media, and now with Briefs Media, I am the CEO of the company. So I get paid as a CEO. Now, when we have a profit in the bank account, meaning after we pay all the employees, we pay for the operational expenses, we pay for all the other expenses, all the remaining cash, that profit is what I get as the owner of the company. That's what gets distributed to the owners. Now, if I wanted to go leave and do something else and I wanted to bring in a new CEO, the CEO would take the CEO's salary, but I would continue to retain the ownership and the profits of the company because I own the company. So there's a difference between the money you make for working there and the money you get for owning the company. The second way you can get these types of business profits is a type of royalty. Back in the day, the most common way to do this would be either to create a technology and then license it out or to write a book. That was the only type of content that you could really create where you could get royalties besides being an artist and making music and doing other things like that. But if you wrote a book and now you have your publisher selling it, it's at Barnes & Noble, it's on Amazon. Every time you sell a book, you get a little bit of royalties. Well, now you also have the same type of royalty model with things like YouTube videos, with things like podcasts. So now I make videos on YouTube. When I make a video on YouTube and people watch it, I get paid. And I don't make a lot of money per view. Maybe it's like a penny per view. But when I make a video that's released a year ago and the video gets watched today, that video that was made a year ago is still producing revenue today. Again, maybe a penny per view but this is now another way to generate cash flow from the business. Now, unlike some of the other investments, this is not completely passive because even now with YouTube, if I want my videos from a year ago to continue getting views today with the way the algorithm works, if I stopped putting out videos today, my videos from a year ago would stop getting views. 
So just the way that it works, you have to keep producing content today that way your old content can keep producing that type of revenue. But now the whole idea here is can you create something? Can you build something? Can you own something where now you can go out and do something and these profits are your cash flow beyond just the income that you would get for working there. This is what cash flow investing is all about, where now you're putting your money to work, that way now your money can get you money in your pocket today without having to wait to sell your investments at some point in the future. Because if you can build this type of cash flow, well now, well, when you have enough cash flow to fund your expenses, now you are financially free and you have broken out of the traditional system. You can make money by having somebody pay you for exposure. For example, in my newsletter company, Briefs Media, we don't actually sell a product to our readers. What we do is we sell advertisements to businesses. So now businesses pay us for exposure in our newsletter. So you don't always have to sell a product, but you have to have some product as an entrepreneur. 